Hello, welcome to the On and Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela and all of the places you can find me, excuse me, <laughs> should be linked in the description box just below this video. As you can see, I'm here at my local beach again. I thought I'd film my introduction here. It's becoming somewhat of a tradition. One week, maybe, if the weather holds, I'll get organised enough to bring all of my stuff down and record the whole episode from here. Um, but here on the channel you'll find me chatting about my adventures in knitting and spinning and crochet and very occasionally weaving though I've fallen off the weaving bandwagon a little bit recently um, but I have some thoughts on that and maybe I might make that one of my extra videos this week. So as well as these weekly chats about what I've been making um, while we are going through this um, worldwide health pandemic I am trying to put up some extra videos through the week just to keep a few people company and also to give myself something to do more than anything <laughs> so look out for those as well um, but yeah this week I've got knitting spinning and crochet to share with you uh, as well as a little bit of chatter about our make-alongs at the end of the video um, what else have I got oh I've got um, a book acquisition if you watched last week you might remember me saying I'd ordered two books and only one had arrived but the second one has now arrived so I'm going to show that to you and right at the end of the video I might put a little bit of a newt montage. Newt is my cat and I know a lot of you enjoy seeing her so I've taken a few clips of her various antics this week uh, so I thought I might stick them on at the end as a little bit of an outro. Um, but for now before we get stuck in here are a few scenes and sounds from the beach. I am back home now um, it got quite windy towards the end of my walk so my hair's a bit of a crazy mess but we're all friends here right <laughs> I am hopeful that you are here for the knitting rather than my appearance <laughs> well I'm pretty sure you're here for the knitting rather than my appearance anyway let's crack on with what I have to actually show you this week So I think I will start with spinning. Um, so I have finished quite a big spin this week, which I'm really pleased with. And it's the first time that I've spun and plied something entirely on my Ashford traditional um, spinning wheel. Um, I was given the wheel um, a little while ago. She's a bit creaky, she's a bit rickety. Um, she still needs some adjusting and some TLC, um, but she's definitely doing the job, which is fantastic. And I also want to say a massive thank you to my lovely friend Jeanette, um, who so very kindly surprised me with a couple of bobbins for the traditional. Thank you so much, Jeanette. Thank you. Um, that really brightened my weekend and um, is meaning that I'm having to spend no time now um, winding things off onto spare bobbins. Um, if you watched the last time I chatted about my traditional, um, you'll know that I only had two bobbins to um, fit the wheel which meant um, that I was having to rewind stuff onto storage bobbins before I could ply it together. Um, so I have finished spinning the lovely fibre that was sent to me by Caroline, my friend Caroline. Um, and oh, I'm trying to gather it all. It ended up in a couple of large skeins and then a few mini skeins for various reasons. Uh, but here it is 
in its entirety. Um, so there's 200 grams here. I haven't yet, it's literally just come off the drying rack and I haven't yet um, measured how many meters. It's gonna take me a while because there's a lot of it. <laughs> um, I would say it's probably a DK weight um, for the most part. So I haven't really measured it yet. So I um, haven't checked the wraps per inch or anything like that. Um, but it was this lovely fiber with greens and yellows and browns. Um, as you can see, there's a few thick and thin bits as I got used to um, spinning on my um, traditional a little bit more, um, but that's okay. Um, this fibre is really nice and soft and I can't wait to figure out how much I've got and what I'm going to make with it. I say there's a lot there, so I think I could make a decent project with this. Um, I two-plied it, um, just a tra traditional two-ply, um, which means that I span my singles to two separate bobbins and then plied them together straight from those bobbins blobbins <laughs> bobbins um for a two-ply yarn i'm fairly sure this is merino fiber although um caroline didn't specify she just sent me um, a swap package a while ago with lots of different braids and bumps of fiber in um but yeah i think this is probably merino fiber and it's spun up really nicely um so yeah i'm looking forward to adding that to my hand spun stash and trying to figure out what project it will become. Look, it's a giant yarn baby, almost as big as my head. <laughs> as well as finishing that yarn off, I've just literally just started um, a new spin on my wheel. So I'll chat some more about that as that progresses. Um, I'm switching back to my Haldane for this spin. I thought I might try and alternate what I'm working on on my wheel. I don't want to pile both of my wheels up with stuff um, because then I'll end up procrastinating and trying to figure out what to spin on. Um, so I thought I might alternate just so that I am keeping up good practice with both of them. Uh, but there's not much to show on that spin yet so i'll chat about it when there has been a little bit more progress and i'm also continuing to spin a couple of spindle drop spindle projects um the peach fiber um that i showed maybe last week maybe the week before um and i've also got a couple of little things going on my turkish spindles too um so i'll try and gather those together and chat a little bit more about those next time on to crochet next now, um, this is not the crochet project that you may be expecting. If you have been watching me for a while, you'll know that I am meant to be working on a test crochet for the lovely Amanda, who is Master Yarnsmith. The pattern is going to be released this Friday, so I'm not gonna make the test knit deadline, but I have sent her feedback on um, the bits and pieces that I found um, with regards to the, it's, uh, the patterns called the catacombs crop. And um, so I've sent her feedback on um, the parts of the pattern that I've worked through, so that's all done, but I'm not gonna get my top finished for the deadline. So um, that's now on the back burner for a little while. Um, instead for crochet this week, um, I picked up a quite a random project that I wasn't expecting um, to make, but <laughs> it was quite a fun little make. And if you watch my Yarn and Yarns extra video, um, which was the crochet and chat video, um, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, I'll put a link to that little video up in the corner in case you want to um, just spend a, a little bit of time with me crocheting in the garden. What am I talking about? You may be wondering if you haven't watched that video. Um, well, I've been trying to do a little bit of a tidy up and a reorganisation here in my um, attic craft room. As I've been reorganising and moving things around. Um, I've rediscovered um, some items that I had in my stash, my craft stash, um, that I'd forgotten about. And this little kit was one of them. Um, so I found this in a bag, shoved into the corner of the room. Um, it's a crochet your own llama kit, which I picked up from a discount store that we have here in the UK called The Works. And as you can see, I paid the prin princely sum of £1.50 for the kit. So I've spent a few hours this week making up the llama. Behold, my wonky llama. <laughs> a touch different from the picture on the front of the kit. Um, I haven't put those pink tufts on his ears. There is a bit of pink yarn in this kit, um, but I'm not 100% on board with those tassels so I'm probably going to leave them off and um, the other thing that I didn't do um, around his little uh, sort of saddle there there are some um, tassels of yarn as well um, but I've left those off and I have chosen instead to put some bells on um, to the piece of felt that is sent with that so um, sorry about the jingling and the noise probably need if I turn him round look this is what I mean by the wonkiness 
look at the back of that it's ridiculous i'll get onto that in a minute <laughs> <laughs> but you can see even with the bells which are much heavier than a few tassels this piece of felt does not want to stay flat um, so I'm probably going to stitch it down um, in the corners and just uh, make sure that it stays in place um, from the front his legs aren't too wonky he looks okay <laughs> but from the back he's just ridiculous look he's got this one really fat leg and this one skinny leg ah oh, dear now let me tell you about that <laughs> <laughs> my poor wonky llama so the pattern it says for ages eight plus and i have to say the directions are pretty sparse so um everything is there but if you've not crocheted more than one or two amigurumis um, i wouldn't necessarily recommend the kit the yarn as you would expect for i mean even at full price the kit was five pounds so it's not expensive uh, but the yarn wasn't the best quality it was a little bit splitty to crochet with but um that often um is the case i find with yarns for crochet um when i'm working my crochet i'm often working against a twist of the yarn so i'm slightly untwisting it um, as i go which means a lot of yarns tend to split more readily than if i'm knitting with them um but this one was quite splitty, uh, particularly for when you get to the sort of small bits and pieces, the ears, the tails and the legs, where you've only got a few stitches per round. Um, it was quite tricky to work and quite hard on the hands. Um, it's a double knit yarn worked on a 2.5 millimeter hook. So pretty dense um, in terms of the crocheting, which you want for the stuffing to not show through. Um, but yeah, that combined with the small rounds meant that it was quite hard work on my hands. Certain instructions for the legs were really, really vague. You kind of had to figure it out. And I started my first leg where I had finished the round for the body. So you crochet, um, you start up here for the head, you go down to the neck, um, then you um, chain on and sort of work round for the body. So I started my first leg um, where I'd left off for the uh, body round uh, because that's what seemed to make sense as per the pattern. But that actually meant that the first leg wasn't quite in the middle. It went across the middle of the back of the llama, um, which I hadn't really thought about until I got round. So I crocheted that leg first and then I came round to the front, did the front two, which as you can see look much better. Um, and then by the time I came around to leave the um, required gap um, between the front leg on this side and the back leg on this side, there wasn't really enough space to put that final leg in. So although there are the same amount of stitches, it looks a bit squashed in because it is. Um, so yeah, poor llama. <laughs> If this had been for someone else or if I was really that bothered about it I probably would have ripped out and done those legs again because yeah let me show you again look how ridiculous that is but because it was a bit of fun just using up a really cheap kit that I purchased I wasn't going to faff around and do those really skinny fiddly legs again so yeah the only thing I need to do to finish him is just tack this um sort of saddle coat covering um down on him um, so the only other thing I would say about the kit, um, other than the yarn not being the best quality um, and the instructions being a little bit vague, is that r realistically I only had enough stuffing to stuff in properly uh, the head and the neck. Um, so I had to use my own stuffing to stuff out the body, the legs and his um, sort of muzzle. Um, you need to stuff these things really tightly, particularly because he has got quite a long neck. Um, if that was floppy, he wouldn't be... Um, sort of head up he'd be very sort of droopy and head down so there was not enough stuffing in the kit to stuff out this toy properly so yeah that was the <laughs> the sum of my crochet this week one wonky llama <laughs> um, I'm quite happy to have that kit done though um, it was a little bit of fun a little bit of a distraction um, I can get rid of all the packaging now recycle it all I just need to find somewhere for wonky llama to live On to knitting and I have one finished object to show you and a couple of works in progress. I also wanted to quickly mention that the shawl that I test knit last week, um, if you watched last week's vlog, um, it was the purple shawl from Debbie Bliss Rialto DK with the four ply and mohair border. 
Um, I was testing that for my lovely friend Charlie, who is Yarn Ambassador over on Instagram and Charlie Button Designs over on Ravelry. Um, that pattern has now been named, it's called the Isolation Shawl, and you will find that as a free download over on Ravelry. I'll put a link to it down below. Um, a few people had commented to say that they were interested in making their own version of the shawl. Um, when the pattern was released so I said I would mention um, when it got released here um, so yeah link below go download a copy as I say it's free and it was a really really fun knit um, 100 grams of DK or sport weight yarn and um, a 20 gram mini or leftover of four ply with a scrap of mohair to make the border um, it was mostly garter stitch apart from that lace edge detail and it was just a really fun meditative calming knit i'm sorry for the noise in the background it's really warm here today um, it's another blue skies day and if i close the windows up here in my attic room uh, i will roast um, but it sounds like one of the neighbours is doing some work in their garden so you might hear some banging and tapping in the background um, so I apologise for that but I really must get this recorded now because um, the day is disappearing fast and I've got a few other bits and pieces that I need to do um, before the end of the day today. Finished object so I knit a lovely little gnome from the hand spun yarn that I recently finished I think I showed off the finished yarn last week and here she is now someone um very rightly pointed out on my last video um that i have a tendency a very naughty tendency to call all of my creatures he um, which is a very bad habit that i have and thank you for picking me up on that it's, it's just a habit that i need to get out of <laughs> if you find me slipping and calling everything he then tell me off below so my name this week and i'm going to try not to call him he um knit from the really lovely textured yarn that i spun up from the um bits of fiber that were sent to me by julie hi julie um i hope you're doing okay um so yeah one gnome knit and i used a leftover um bit of pink hand spun from my hand spun stash to make a beard um i have run out of my sort of natural bits and pieces of hand spun so um i actually just grabbed a um actually it was left over from the um llama kit um just a bit of a acrylic yarn to make the nose and the end of the hands so the pattern i use for this is the never not gnoming pattern by sarah shearer there are various iterations of her known patterns and you can find them all over on Ravelry. Um, I'll link to my project page below which will then take you to where you need to go um, to find the patterns. Um, this one is the original pattern, the Never Not Gnoming pattern and this was the smallest version of the gnome um, that I made. I didn't make any modifications, no, no modifications. Um, I just knit two pattern and this is the adorable little name that emerged. I ended up using slightly less than half of the yarn that I spun so um, this was the textured yarn that I spun up and showed off last week um, so I'm going to make another one of these which I'm really happy about and I'm going to um, try and make a slightly bigger version. I knit this on three millimeter needles and again it was pretty hard going on my hands just because this fibre is fairly thick in places so I'm going to try and go up to a 3.5 or maybe even a 4 and hope to squeeze another gnome out of this I think it will be okay um, so this one I am going to be offering as a giveaway here on the channel um, in the not too distant future I haven't quite worked out how I'm going to do that yet um, but it was a nice diversion it was nice to knit straight away with this yarn and uh, a very quick project fun project and um, I'm looking forward to um, casting on another one probably later on today and then I also have two works in progress to share with you the first one is I am returning to one of my 12 cast ons of Christmas projects um, after I finished that lovely isolation shawl by Charlie um, I realized that I was really craving an like, easy garter backwards and forwards um, knit um, so once that I'd cast that project off I found myself sort of trying to reach for it again <laughs> um, so I had a little browse on my um, projects list on Ravelry and I 
realised that one of my 12 cast on projects um, was also a garter stitch based shawl. So I've resurrected the Storm Shawl, which is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli, and I'm knitting mine in some lovely handspun yarn that I made um, from some fibre from Ashford. It was a blend of merino and silk. This is the poppy seed colourway. This was a gift from my lovely friend Tracy um, when we visited her in New Zealand a couple of years ago. And I spun this. I probably broke every kind of spinning rule for spinning this. I spun half of it on my drop spindle and half of it on my wheel and then applied the two together um, but it's made for a really lovely um, probably a light fingering weight yarn um, but it's really silky and soft and um, it weighs nothing it's got some really really nice bounce and drape to it I'm really proud of this yarn and so uh, yeah I thought I'd have a go with the um, Storm Shawl by Hohi Locatelli which is mostly garter stitch um, with these great big drop stitch rows and some eyelet rows thrown in for good measure. Um, so yeah I started this as one of my 12 cast ons and when you last saw this project um, let's get this the right way around it was down here at the stitch marker um, so my first day's progress was it's a bit hard to show because it's all now bunched up on the needle um, from here to there so that uh, where's the middle so that's the garter tab so I did that on the first day that I worked on this and um, since I've picked this up this week you can see I've knit a lot I have actually finished the pattern as written now um, it's just a one skein shawl I'm not usually a massive fan of one skein shawls they're not often big enough for me but the project page pictures um, with the drop stitch and the garter stitch um, by the time these shawls are blocked they seem fairly big um, so I thought I'd take a chance. Um, I was also slightly concerned that I wouldn't have enough yarn um, because I think meterage wise um, I didn't have as much as the pattern uh, suggested. Um, however as I say mine is quite a light fingering weight so it's gone really far and I've got loads left. Uh, the pattern does recommend that you can continue this last garter stitch, se garter stitch section for as long as you want um, if you have additional yarn um, and then it's finished with a pico bind off so I think I'm going to do that I'm going to carry on knitting I've got um, a fair few rows left in this ball um, so my plan I think is um, my next row I'm probably going to chuck in another eyelet and then I'm going to carry on with the garter stitch until I've got roughly enough to cast off. Um, it's going to be a bit of a guessing game. Pattern recommends saving 10 yards or something like that for your cast off. But obviously if you adapt the shawl and you go bigger, then your cast off is going to be bigger. Therefore you need more. So I think I'm just going to have to try and wing it and um, make sure that I've got enough left over for my cast off. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying working on that again. And I worked on it all day yesterday. It was the only thing that I picked up yesterday. Um, it's just a really nice knit and it's really fun to be working with my hand spun yarn. This colourway is gorgeous. Um, it's a very deep sort of charcoaly grey and it's got these hints of a sort of burgundy red um, through them which the camera is probably not going to be um, picking up. Um, and then there's also some lighter specks which I guess are the silk in the um, original fibre blend. Uh, so yeah, the Storm Shawl by Hohi Locatelli and that's living in my lovely bag from Emma who is Eldenwood Craft and um, this is one of her robin print bags i've had it for quite a while and um, emma's just moved over to a new website i'll link her um, details below um, she had a shop update recently and i think she's planning on putting stuff in the shop as and when she has it ready to go rather than do um sort of big updates like she had been doing before so um emma's bags are super quality so please do go and check her out if you haven't before um emma also has the eldenwood craft podcast here on youtube and then finally, after finishing my um, Vermeer cushion last week, which was my oldest knit in progress, um, I moved to the next oldest work in progress, which is my Chances Wrap. Now Chances is a brioche shawl um, by Charlotte Borre. Again, I'll link my project below um, from which you'll be able to hop on over to the original pattern page. Um, but it's a very shallow shawl, so it's more like a scarf. Um, it's very long, it's huge, and I started this, um, oh, who knows when, um, from four really glorious yarns. And let me just try and hold this up to show you. So this point here is the middle, yeah? <laughs> so this uh, school shawl or scarf is gonna be massive. Um, so this is the first half by knit 
and then I'm working on the second half so I've still got a fair way to go um, but all the while now I am decreasing stitches so the great thing about this pattern is um, and it's one of the points that um, Charlotte mentions in her pattern um, she's not a fan of the sort of traditional crescent asymmetric or triangular sort of shaped shawls where you end up with hundreds and hundreds of stitches on the needle so this is knit sideways and um, you just keep going for a long time to get the length so you never really have um, tons and tons of stitches on the needles which is great it's looking a bit scruffy and messy at the moment um, the pattern suggests leaving your ends um, unwoven in um, you go back and you put an eye cord around the edge so I think she, she suggests a technique where you wrap your ends up in the eye cord so as not to have loads and loads of ends to weave in um, it's been a while since I worked on this. Um, this octopus marker shows um, where the shawl was when I picked it up this week. Um, so I have knit quite a way down this and I'm loving working on this again. I don't know why it's been put away for so long. Love this colour combination. Um, it all started with this fun yarn here which is in the middle section um, which was a gift for my lovely friend Erin. Um, so this was the skein that she sent me and I think it's Cauldron of Colour. I've got all the labels, I think, um, buried in the bag here somewhere. Yeah, Cauldron of Colours. Um, and the colourway is the Blue Boar. And I believe that's an Agatha Christie um, inspired colourway. And I paired that. Um, so I wanted to cast this on. Oh, it's really blowing out in this light. Um, it's a lovely sort of pastel -y yellow with hints of blue and orange and mustardy yellow in it. Um, you can see it better in that section in the middle there where it's knit up. And um, that's a much more accurate representation of the colourway than this ball, which is just blowing out in the light. So I paired that with several yarns from my stash. So here they are all together. Um, so these two, uh, this grey one and this yellow one, are both from Yantan Tethera Yarns. Um, Helen, Yantan Tethera, is one of my favourite indie dyers. She dyes glorious colourways. Um, so the yellow is called Cornstalk and it's on her Pedere base, which is a 75-25 um, merino nylon. And the other is on her acker base which is 85 percent merino 15 percent um donegal neps so it's a tweedy base and then the final yarn um that i'm using in that is this lovely sort of gray base with the blue um flex and that's a countess ablaze yarn um dark clouded sun of chronos is the colorway and it was part of a special edition one of her odyssey trail colorways um, from a couple of years ago and it's the Countess of Mohair sock yarn so 55% merino, 25% nylon and 20% kid mohair so yeah I put all those together um, as I say ages ago to make this lovely shawl or wrap I think it's called a wrap, chances wrap and uh, this is now my oldest work in progress and I'm just oh, so excited to finally get back to this um, and get working on it um, obviously brioche requires a little bit more concentration um, than my normal knitting but not that much once you get into the rhythm of it it's really nice that's living in my um, the fawn and the fox uh, project bag so yeah that's everything that I have been working on this week so just a couple of things to mention before I sign off. Um, the first, um, I have an acquisition to share with you. Um, this is the second book that I ordered from Search Press. Um, you might remember in my video last week, I did briefly mention that Search Press have offered me a promo code, a promotion code, um, as a way for um, customers to help support my bricks and mortar yarn shop um, during this difficult time. Um, if you enter the promo code DD05, um, when you hit their checkout, um, you will get 20% off your book purchases and they will also pay me a small commission for sending the business their way. And quite a few of you have taken advantage of that code and I thank you so much for that. I showed off the crochet book that I ordered and the knit book that I ordered, How Could I Not, um, is the new Cat Knits book um, by Marina Gilligan. And um, this is the design team behind the sinister catagon which you've probably seen the jumper and uh the cardi and uh, all sorts over um on instagram and ravelry if you are a knitter um so this book is 16 cat inspired designs and so i 
decided to treat myself to this book. Um, there are some really cute projects in here and at some point in the not too distant future I'm going to cast one of these on and do a book review for you. Look out for that as a yarn and yarns extra soon. We have the New Techniques Cal going on over in the Ravelry group. So if you'd like to um, spend some time learning something new, um, doing something different, um, then hop on over and put some photographs of your projects in that thread. Um, you have from now until the end of May to join in um, any technique that's new to you. Um, and you don't have to finish your project, just pop a picture of the start of your project. Also have a prize winner to announce for the first quarter of the 12 Cast Ons Cal. Um, I was going to do that in this video but I have an idea for um, a separate yarn and yarns extra um, just my thoughts are just to catch up on where I am for my 12 cast ons um, do a quick review of that um, a little chat on my plans with the uh, projects that still remain on the needles and also to announce the giveaway winner in that video so um, if you're participating in that cow look out for a yarn and yarns extra video on that coming at some point this week it was everything that i wanted to, to chat to you about this week i hope you have all still been able to stay safe and well and i hope you're staying indoors as often as you are able to so let me know how you're doing in the comments below and i shall be back at some point this week for some more yarn and yarns extras to keep those of you company who need it before we get to spend some time together again i hope you get to do some of the things that you enjoy great big golly hugs to you all bye for now That is not for playing with.